everybody, and welcome to the Ask Assist P podcast. My name is Ryan Williams, and this is a complimentary podcast to the other side of the firewall, where we talk about delays and greats in cybersecurity news, as well as we highlight those moves to shakers and glass cylinder breakers, those people of color who've made to the other side of the proverbial firewall. Speaking of which, with me today, Derek Phillips. So he is the president and founder of Aspire Cyber. He's also uh, an Army veteran, so another military entrepreneur on the podcast. So back to back. So last time uh, we had a guest on the uh, the show, uh, Yvonne Rivera, and uh, Yvonne was also prior army. So, uh, you know, it's 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 just we we do it right when we start businesses, we we trudge forward, we, we do what we need to do. But without getting too uh, far ahead of myself, right? So uh, I've been blessed the, the past few weeks. I have a uh, interview lined up pretty much every week. Derek reached out to me, he ha has his own podcast, all the good stuff we're gonna talk about. And I just really like this content. And uh, it's also very relevant to the conversation that we've been having over the past uh, several weeks to do with CMMC. So uh, let's just hop right into it. Let's uh, get a little bit of your, your background, your cybersecurity origin story. Uh, and what you're currently doing. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me, Ryan. Definitely happy to be here and uh, enjoying the content that you're putting out. So my origin story started two weeks after high school graduation. I was in Army basic training, and that's where I started my cybersecurity career, served four years in the Army. In that role, I was a a telecommunications operator maintainer, which is a, a, a long phrase for just ComSec custodian, focusing on gotcha. encrypting the military data, the secret and top secret network. And that was a good experience for me last year in the Army. I deployed to Iraq, exposed to working with defense contractors. So that right. opened up my eyes to that opportunity. And six months after returning from Iraq, I went back as a defense contractor, okay. uh, working in the security operations center. And then I worked for several defense contractors, the largest one being Lockheed Martin. Gotcha. And so I spent a total about three years in Iraq, a year and a half in Afghanistan. And then by 20, about 2012, I was uh, kind of done with being in war zones. I decided, okay, let me transition to right. the to back to America and see if I can do the cybersecurity thing in the private sector, which I did and worked for several large companies, Hewlett Packard Enterprises, information security okay. officer. And prior to starting to aspire cyber, I worked for Bank of America as a third party risk assessor. And it was in that awesome. role where it really opened my eyes to working with small businesses and realizing that so many of them don't have that cybersecurity expertise in house. So that's really the, the void in the market with us that aspire cyber field, trying to help those small businesses navigate their cybersecurity compliance requirements. No, that's, that's a, a, a really good, uh, trek up right to where you're currently at. So, uh, already having your feet in, uh, in the water, so to speak, when it came to the ComSec, which that, that transition, uh, is, I see, I see it a lot actually. So I, I was not a ComSec guy, right? I worked with the ComSec guys and information charts guys. Uh, I was a network guy, but I see a lot of them able to make that transition a little bit easier, right? Because I always have to explain my network, network background and what, is, what does that mean to cybersecurity? Uh, right. As I'm a cybersecurity guy in the in the military, and now I want to do this on the outside. So no, that that's a, a great direct link, and I, I try to tell people, um, you know, sell that when you're getting out because uh, yeah. that you already have a foot in the door. That you don't have to to uh, necessarily explain yourself as much. Because they, they think we're all soldiers or airmen. Like, all we do is just yeah. march around all day. Right? Like, no, I, I do this in the military. Yeah. So now here's right. my, my transition. So, so you said you saw how contractors were uh, kind of interacting and working in, in the sandbox uh, while you're out there. So you're like, hey, you know, these guys need to go home. <laughs> they have all right. these additional duties and, and nonsense. Uh, right. What was that transition like? Was it? Was it, I'd say, easy, but was it, hey, I already have connections and I'm able to use my network to transition? Or uh, was it a little bit more uh, footwork for you? Yeah, good question. So really, the first thing to open my eyes with working as a soldier is I was working alongside those defense contractors doing the exact same job. But I realized that they were making Right. Five times, ten times <laughs> more. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> and right. I'm having to, uh, I'm, I'm there with full battle rattle, the vest, the M16. And right. I'm, I'm doing the, the hard work and they're, they're making the big bucks. So that was really eye opening to me. So when it came time for the recruiter asking, hey, do you want to re enlist for six more years? We'll give you about right. a, 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 a <laughs> 
a thousand dollar bonus or a ten thousand dollar bonus like no but to your question it, it was easier because fortunately i did forge those relationships while i was working in iraq and i did have those contacts once i transitioned out from working as a defense contractor to the private sector it was a little more challenging for me because I, I didn't quite connect the dots. And you mentioned mm -hmm. about that, making that translation as far as what you're doing in the defense sector and now what you, what you could do in the private sector. And for me, it didn't click for me that, hey, it is a direct translation because I wasn't, right. just wasn't familiar with that the private sector. But in hindsight, yeah, there's a big component of it. And I try to tell any military people that are um, transitioning out, trying to move into the private sector, you, just, you have to just make a translation. You have to translate what you did in the military and look into how, map that to how your skills map over to the, the private sector. And it is a direct mapping. It's just, you just have to know how to make that translation. Right, yeah, the corporate speak is definitely a lot different. I, I start to see a lot more military bleed in to their vocabulary, but at the end of the day, I just want people to be prepared to have to, you know, intensely explain themselves. Like, hey, right. I, I do do this uh, on top of all the other things, right? And and sometimes it's it's a hard sell because it's kind of unbelievable uh, what they allow a teenager to do in the military. <laughs> right. Like, you, you did what? <laughs> like, yeah. it, it sounds fabricated because you say, well, I worked on a million dollar systems. I was right. able to charge this. Of a I was in people. charge of lots of yeah. people. Right. right? And, and you're speaking to somebody who may just not be entering into that position themselves, being in charge of people, managing people, uh, right. and they're much older than you. Like, no, well, in the military, like, it's a young man's game. So <laughs> right. They give us a <laughs> lot up front. <laughs> on the fast track, certainly. Right. So it's just being confident and being able to translate. So no, that, that's, that's amazing. So when it came to your pivot from, so you said you went from uh, defense contracting to the private sector, and then you made the jump into uh, entrepreneurship. So what was that like? Well, so I mentioned when I was working for Bank of America and in that role, I was assessing th Bank of America third party vendors that included small businesses, medium and large organizations. And I had performed before I left there about 100 risk assessments. But a lot of those small businesses that I was working with performing their risk assessments, they were really struggling to navigate those requirements. They didn't understand what they needed to do, how to do it, when and where. And it was, I remember it was one uh, organization that I was assessing and I was working with the CEO and he was really frustrated, like mad at us. Like, I, I don't understand these requirements. I've already spent tens of thousands of dollars with consultants trying to figure this out. And he was nowhere close to being finished. But as an assessor, I, I couldn't guide him and tell him how to implement the right, right controls and so forth. I could only assess it, the controls. And that was really that aha moment for me, like the, that I could take my insider skills and knowledge now that I, since I served in that role as an assessor and use that to perform, help small businesses navigate their requirements. I knew that I can do that pretty seamlessly because oftentimes I would see a lot of those small businesses, they're really overcomplicating it and they just didn't understand what they needed to do. Therefore, they were just throwing everything at the wall and trying to get something to stick. And that just wasn't a really efficient approach. So I was like, okay, I came home, told my wife that same day, like, Hey, I want to start a business where we can actually help small businesses with cybersecurity compliance. Cause this is a growing uh, area. It's not going to decrease. It's, it's increasing right. in terms of you have the private sector, you have federal um, agencies requiring all of these um, cybersecurity regulations. And to my surprise, she was, she's like, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do it. And her background is marketing. I had a lot of different uh, uh, entrepreneurial ideas in the past and, and many of them didn't work out because in hindsight it wasn't really aligned with my expertise I was mm -hmm. just trying random things like real estate and podcasting and so forth so I'll try to do like a, a professional speaker motivational speaker I was just trying okay. to kind of random right. things, trying to really pivot outside of cybersecurity and it was once I landed in that role as a risk assessor I realized like hey, I really enjoy this I'm really good at this and I've been doing this at this point for 17 18 years why not start a business in this area and it, it you would think it's, it was counterintuitive to me, but yeah, it should have made the most sense. But once my wife was like, hey, let's do it. And within a week, I uh, created our LLC and just got the ball rolling. We started on a freelance website called Upwork, landed okay. a few clients. I, at the time, I was still working for Bank of America, but I was working remotely. So that gave me an opportunity to start building some clientele up before making a big leap of being an entrepreneur full time. Right. 
No, that that's that, and you just laid a lot of groundwork for people who are thinking about it, right? Uh, myself included, like, oh, okay, yeah, I didn't, I didn't even know that website was uh, a, a thing. So that, that definitely goes to, into the description of the uh, the episode, right? For those mm-hmm. who are trying to start it. Uh, so two two things. So um, one, I'm disheartened that consultants were doing a bad job, right? Like, so at, I have experience, consulting experience now, right? So when I left the military, I went to the private sector, I did consulting, um, but what was good about that was I could say, hey, here's your readiness assessment or your actual assessment. Because like you said, you can't, I can't give you the answers to the test, right? There's right. a snapshot of where you're at currently. And compliance doesn't necessarily mean security, but you've been wasting money on both. That's a shame. Here is your whatever grade, you know, doing mm-hmm. an SCSF or what have you. Um, but as the consultant, like you want to steer, especially a small business, you don't want to waste money because that, that's, right. you can't get that. You can't get them back, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like a lot of yeah. the consulting is uh, not only making sure you you know set up the client for a good experience, get them ready for the test, make sure they actually do have security, not just compliance, right? right? And then you're trying to get them to come back, right? Because you did such a good job, right? Uh, it makes no sense to me. Like you you just wasted an opportunity to have future work. Like maybe they pivot into another assessment, maybe they you know grow in size and then they can pay you or things of that nature or just being ethical and <laughs> being a good person <laughs> right. on top of it. Um, so that, that's thing number one. So yeah, that, that is kind of crazy to me. Um, but again, now that helped motivate you. So I, everything happens for, for a reason. People put you in the right, or the universe or God or whomever, you know, puts you in the right place to, to do what you need to do. So obviously it helps you along your path. But thing number two is the, um, the trying multiple things out. I, I, I think that's another military thing because we're so used to doing so much with so little mm-hmm. and being provided with all of these, you know, there's so many different additional duties and, and things that need to be filled. Uh, you can be uh, not only a communications person, a single person, but then on top of it, you're also the, the equal opportunity person. You're also the you oh, know, yeah. uh, sexual assault uh, response counselor. You're also like, you're building all these skills as you move around. You're a first sergeant, right? So now you're like HR on steroids. So you're getting all these things, and then when you leave the military, you find out that your your civilian peers just do a thing or two. Right. It's like that is my job. This is what I do, and it can you have all this energy. <laughs> so yeah, I, I know some of my wife, some of it's trauma, <laughs> but for the most part, like it, it encourages you to want to start your own business, to want to do more because you're like I have all these skills. I right. need to do something with this stuff, right? Especially when it comes to like you said, you want to be a key speaker and motivate people and things of that nature. Like mentorship is, is kind of like baked into you. Right. So yeah. it's, it's great to see that you, you brought that out with you and then you you landed on uh your your uh your company, um Aspire Cyber, which I, I've been tracking uh, you know, since uh we, we communicate with each other, which is small circles, right? So I had Darren King on the show, you ran into him uh, right. recently. Yeah. So it, it's crazy how big cybersecurity is, but how you know tight knit the community uh is. So with is. Aspire Cyber uh, what is your 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 vision? What is your mission statement? What are you guys uh, looking to contribute to our community? Yeah. So Aspire Cyber, our, our mission is to make cybersecurity compliance just easy for all organizations, especially focusing on those small businesses, because I believe there's a misconception that cybersecurity has to be complicated. And especially when you're talking about right. compliance and regulations and no one likes reading regulations, but once you understand what the requirements are, our focus is breaking it down into bite-sized pieces and providing them with the strategy and the resources they need to actually make it easy. And what we mean by easy, actually streamlining a lot of the activities, automating whichever activities we can, and just providing them tools and templates and technology that really makes it easy for them. And it's not going to never be just a one and done activity, but again, our approach is just to make it easier than what most people assume it it has to be. It doesn't have to be complicated. That, that's our approach. So the easier we can make it for our clients, the better. And you mentioned about with consultants in the in the cybersecurity field, it's I think I think all consultants for the most part I hope they, they try to do a good job and they want right. to do a good job. But when you're talking about compliance requirements, there's so many nuances, so many unwritten rules. So it's they just may not know. 
and and it's a big, especially when you think about CMMC, the the, the D- Department of Defense Cybersecurity right. Maturity Model Certification. There's so many nuances, so many things that's not explicitly written in the regulation. So for someone that's not living, sleeping, eating, breathing, that um, CMMC, then they're just not going to know, and they can lead their clients in the wrong direction unknowingly. But the the consequence is it, that's a lot of money, a lot of a lot of money that the uh, uh, the small business is going to lose out right. on is not non-refundable like you're alluding to. So that that's a big part of it. But really our, our mission and what we, we try to do every day is make it easy for our, our clients. No, absolutely. And that, that's very noble of you because yeah, it's, it's, it is difficult, especially for small businesses. It's what I'm starting to see um, in the, the department of defense with the CMC is kind of a moving target, right? So right. like when I'm looking for information, when I'm trying to educate myself on it uh, to make sure I'm prepared for the, the transition and potentially become an assessor, right? I, I'm thinking of that <laughs> and, and on that side because I just find it so fascinating, right? And it gets me back kind of kind of back in the mission because uh, mm-hmm. I do miss the Department of Defense to a certain extent. Uh, not Again, not the travel part of it. <laughs> the, the do more with less. Uh, I, right. I think, right? I, it was a great experience. Like I, I love my military career, but it's very challenging. Right. Um, but with something like this, this moving target, like I can see a lot of frustration. So when I'm looking for information, I, I go to your LinkedIn. I go to Darren King. I go to, I, I believe his name is, uh, is it Jacob King? J- Jacob Hill. Jacob Hill, one. yes. Yeah. And I took his. I took one of his courses, right? Like, mm-hmm. uh, and then uh, Chris Abacon. It was a, a, a coworker of mine. Like, I go to your guys' pages when I'm trying to make sure I I know what I'm, I'm speaking of, right? So I speak intelligently to it, and I I know what has changed because uh, it is a moving target. So how uh, how do you stay on top of it? Like, what is what are your methods to make sure that you understand the uh, the new regulations and are able to then translate them to people who are not. In, in this uh, this field, yeah, part of it is specialization because, as you know, cybersecurity is such a large career field. So many different specialties within cybersecurity. So, Aspire Cyber, we focus primarily on cybersecurity compliance. So, if you think about your ISO twenty seven thousand one, your SOC two, HIPAA, CMMC, we have team members and partners that have expertise in all of those sub specialty areas. And we just don't try to do it all in terms of like one person, one stop shop. Because right. my, however, if we have a client that needs help with HIPAA, we have that partner. If we have someone needs SOC two, we have that part. So it's really a collaboration is how we're able to stay on top of it. And also, we're not positioning ourselves as hey, we're a guru in everything cybersecurity. That that's almost impossible. Right. But if if you leverage your your partners and those team members and have them specialize in those areas, then it 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 can really benefit your clients. So you think about it as like with doctors, if you you have specialties within medicine, same way for cybersecurity, you have people that specialize in, in different areas. So that's really the key. And for CMMC, I just, like you mentioned, following those, those key voices in cybersecurity, the people that are really active, following what they're doing, following the DOD, seeing what they're putting out, following just everything I can consuming related to, CMMC and that, and then also doing official training. So I'm a certified CMMC assessor and as well to aspiring um, assessors. So it, it's just really being uh, immersing myself in the material so I can stay abreast of what's going on. No, that, that's, that's, that's great to know, especially um, when it comes to navigating your site, right? Cause you guys are doing a lot uh, within that field, but it's good to see that you, you specialize. Cause I think a lot of people do try to be a, a one man army, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> and they, they want to be able to, to do it all, which I, I, I commend them on that. But like you said, there's, there's a lot of nuance when it comes to nuance, yeah. specific regulation, right? you don't want to set your clients up uh, for potential failure, always lead to security. But if you're not secure and you're out of compliance, how much money have you wasted? Right. Um, and then that recovery is, is even rougher, especially for a small business. So again, that, that's commendable. Um, if people wanted to take your, your training or um, if they decide that they want to follow you, uh, we're going to get to all your social medias and things of that nature. But um, is it is your website the, the best place to go when it comes to, um, you know, I have my small business and I need to connect and I need to, you know, a, a specific assessment or I'm, I'm thinking of a uh, uh, you know, dipping my toe into the Department of Defense. I need a readiness assessment, things of that nature. Like, is that kind of where uh, sort of looking for? Is it the keystone? Is that your 
website? Yeah, I would say AspireCyber.com. If you're looking for services, you need assistance, ASAP, yeah, that'd be the best place to contact us because our, our phone number is on there, our email, and we'll respond really quickly, <laughs> typically the same day. Right. And if you call us, you know, I'll pick up the phone and answer. But other than that, I have other social media platforms that I just share free information like our YouTube channel. So Aspire Cyber YouTube channel. Also, I just recently started doing YouTube shorts, just kind of sharing behind the scenes of what it's like to be an entrepreneur in the cybersecurity field and LinkedIn. I'm very active on LinkedIn as well. So just trying to lead with value, share as much information as I can. So as I'm learning, I'm sharing. No, that's great. And so yeah, that's a, a great segue. So thing number one. I, there's no no marketing deals or any any campaign here. Like I I literally mm -hmm. want this information myself, so that's why I ask those questions. Uh, and typically we come into a, a, a discussion completely cold is what I like to do. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I know what questions to ask, but I, I do have some of the the answers to the test because we did talk beforehand. Because I, I think mm -hmm. you're trying to make sure I wasn't crazy. So <laughs> <laughs> what I tell uh -huh. people is if if if. If I record and you're crazy, I'm just not gonna use the material. <laughs> There's just like, no, I want to talk to you first. I want to know who you are. So, but no, this it's a great segue, right? When it comes to your content, like, so what is your inspiration? Because again, I'm following, I'm following you, I'm following uh, uh, Tabitha, I'm following uh, Darren, uh, Jacob. Like, you guys are, are producing a lot of really great material. So again, like you've seen, like the format is changing, right? I'm trying to evolve as well uh, mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm being inspired by. Uh, by you guys and so what what kind of helps you with your shorts like what what makes you know like hey this is something i can produce in short form content and i can you know educate someone who is uh looking for this information i think as, as you mentioned just being a, a military veteran just that mentorship and leadership is at our core so i, I view myself as a educator a teacher at heart i love to read and learn but also like to share what i, I learn so that that's a big part of it and then the other component of it being an entrepreneur you have to be really intentional about building your brand and focusing on it's pretty much getting your name out there and your brand out there. And if you're leading with value and you really do have that heart for service, then that's going to go a long way with building your brand and your reputation. So you can't really and think about everything that you're putting out there for potential clients or, or existing customers. Not only are you leading with that value, helping them, helping people solve their problems, but you're also making those impressions and are starting to get to know your name and your face and your your company and what you're all about. So I'm I'm a big believer that people do business with those that they know, like and trust. So that that's part of my inspiration in addition to one lead with value and, and share what I learn, but also just provide our prospective clients and existing customers that assurance that hey, we're we're here to stay. We're we're here right. and we know what we're talking about and providing them that, that level of demonstrating our expertise. No, absolutely. So yeah, I do hear uh, you know, be genuine. Be authentic, and I do get that within your content. Like when I'm watching your videos, I'm like, "This is really good material. Like, this is good stuff." So I'm just like, "Man, I've never been good with shorts, though." So, <laughs> so I've produced a few. I don't know. Like if you go to my YouTube uh, channel, I did not take them down, but I want to. Right? I'm, I'm bald faced. Right? No beard. <laughs> my hair like me, like me, <laughs> <laughs> baby face. <laughs> but, like uh, my hair, my hair is real short. I'm still wearing a brown tee because I'm I'm deployed at the time. Right? I'm making all these cybersecurity shorts. What? So like if, if you had to give somebody uh, kind of like a key to developing content, right? Like, okay, you, you obviously you have to know the, uh, the information, you have to be authentic, you have to be genuine, but then what helps you to um, necessarily go viral, but to reach and to, to have engagement, to, to reach the masses, like what, what helps you to get your uh, content seen by more eyes? Yeah. So first, once you, Identify, okay, who are you serving? Who's the audience you're speaking to? Now you want to identify, okay, what are their problems? What solutions are they looking for? And then create content around that. And yeah, you, it's hard to approach it from saying, okay, I want to go viral. I want to have X number right. of views. Just more so, like, okay, like you mentioned, just ha getting some type of engagement and uh, just delivering something that someone's going to find useful. But I think the biggest advice I give to content creators first getting started is we have to get out of our own heads and not think that what we have to create needs to be perfect because there there is a lot of competition out there, obviously, particularly like YouTube and places like that. But everyone starts 
at ground zero. Everyone starts with zero subscribers, zero followers, and they they have to learn. And, and I think it's a good idea for you to keep your shorts up because what I do realize is people want to see the journey. They want to see that progression, see how where you started and now where you are today because a lot of times you see where people are their day 7,000 versus their day one. Right. And it's hard and we get caught up in comparing ourselves to our day one to their day 7,000. So it, it really is important to just kind of embrace that, that growth embrace. And when you start anything new, you're going to suck at it. So <laughs> it, it is a part of, that's part of the journey. And that, that's really what keeps me, me going. Just like, okay, I'm, I'm going to get better at this. The more I do it, get my reps in and just right. realize like, okay, if I'm, have the right intentions and I, I am leading with value then someone's going to get some, some good use out of this content, whether it's one person or a million, it's just, you have to always be thinking about yeah, that one person. And when I was um, pursuing my motivational speaking career, <laughs> short lived it was, that was one thing I was taught like doing through Toastmasters and also the national speakers association. It's like, whatever your message is, you're focusing on that, that one person in the audience it can be an audience of, thousand people but it's just that one person if one person walks away and say wow I'm, I'm glad i attended this session or webinar or watched this podcast then you, your mission is accomplished right no that's that's those are, are great great values to live by right um especially when it comes to the don't compare yourself to others right like we're no one's going to be mr beast right that, that guy has a bajillion subscribers he makes content yeah. that you know is uh unrivaled he's gonna play millions of dollars things of that nature However, um, like you said, if we go back 10 years, look at his content, right. it's not going to be that great. <laughs> you know, Pretty you much. have to baby steps, you have to, to, to build up. So no, right. that, that's good for anybody who's listening, who's, who's kind of thinking about going in that direction. Uh, when it comes to upcoming initiatives, uh, where do you see yourself, uh, you know, the, the five meter, the 50 meter, the 500 meter target um, in the future for uh, Aspire Cyber and as well as yourself as a content creator? Yeah. So some of the big initiatives we have for 2024, we've been working on developing a GRC tool. So governance risk and compliance app where our clients can use to track their their compliance activities, perform gap assessments. And we're starting off with the CMMC framework, but we've been working on that over a little over 12 months now. So we're pretty close to getting ready to launch that GRC tool. So really excited about that. And then the next initiative is we are in the process of becoming a C3PO. So a a okay. CMMC third party assessment organization, meaning we'll be actually be able to perform those certification assessments for CMMC level two. But in order to do that, we first have to um, pass in a CMMC level two assessment ourselves. So we'll be assessed by the right. Department of Defense and we're in the process of preparing for that assessment. So, again, goes back to whoever organizations are using as their consultants just make sure they know what they're doing they've actually they're eating, they're, they've been through that process so i do like that fact that for cmmc they require those c3pos to actually be assessed and score a perfect 110 points on that in the assessments so it gives clients that that um, assurance that okay yeah they know what they're doing <laughs> which is, yeah, is, is, is really important other than that as far as a content creator this year i'm really focused on just being consistent putting content out there getting better whether it's um, what platform I'm using or editing and just kind of making my content more more authentic, genuine, and entertaining as well because it's easy to fall into the trap within cybersecurity that a lot of people can think tech, but people like to be entertained regardless, and they like to. So that's part of one thing I just have to be intentional about and as far as teach, but all at the same time kind of entertain people as much as possible within, within reason. <laughs> but, right. Yeah, that's that's some of the big things we're, we're focused on. So and then just brand building. That's one of the biggest things where I'm really intentional about doing podcasts like this, webinars, um, putting out podcasts. It's yeah, it's just never ending. Uh, but that's, that's part of the game as an entrepreneur. You're, you're always focusing on that brand building. Get people to right. know who you are and what you what you can do for them. No, absolutely. So yeah, when it comes to the mentorship, I mean, you're 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 still doing it. Like not only through uh, your your business and your uh, your content, but even in this conversation, because you're probably the third or fourth entrepreneur I've I've had the uh, again I've, I've been blessed to speak to in the past month, and all of you are grinding so hard. Like it's inspirational. It's like man, 
if I want to build my brand, if I want to create my business, this is what I have to look forward to, right? Uh, and it's not just the uh, the grind, but it's the, the, the fruits of your labor, right? So yeah. you have, you know, the uh, you have the company, you have the uh, the clientele, and you have content, which is very inspirational and educational. So I, I definitely appreciate uh, you as well as the Darings, the Yvonnes, the Aisha Hollins, uh, I, Chelsea Pierre, like the, the list goes on and on and on. People I've talked to. So if I, if I did not mention you, tr- best believe I follow you on LinkedIn <laughs> and, I, and I absorb your content. Uh, so, I mean, even look at the format change here. Like I saw you and Dr. Uh, Burt Miller both using this, uh, I believe it's called Riverside. And I was like, you know what? I like the way it looks, it's pretty clean. Uh, let me go check it out. And then now you're the first one who uh, is on the format. So hopefully all this records. Uh, I'm honored. <laughs> I'm honored. And certainly I'm, I'm following you as well. And I think you're putting out great content. So yeah, every, that. every podcast you put out can make a difference in terms of inspiring someone and giving them career guidance or just giving your guests a platform that you've created. So that's something that yeah, you should be proud of. No, yeah, I, I, I definitely appreciate that. Uh, hopefully my, my son wants to play Fortnite right now. I was like, no, nah, I need the PC. Because <laughs> we share the studio, right? So hopefully he appreciates it as well. Uh, he, he, but uh, speaking of uh, studios, so I saw a picture of your rig, right? You have to kind of break it down. Like you have, it, it's really cool looking. Like I saw you had the, you had the lights, you got the, you know, the obviously the uh, the camera, but I also saw the green screen. So what, what have you been doing with that? Oh, so yeah, that studio was actually was so. So I basically, I was contacted by EC Council. They they are a certification body, and they are, that they have like the ethical hacker certification right. and C-A-C-H-F-I. several others. C-A-C-H-F-I. Yeah, C-A-C-H-F-I. Yeah. exactly. But I also didn't know at the time that they have the largest cybersecurity learning platform as far as courses. So I was contacted ah, okay. by one of their uh, content editors last year like last June, they said, Hey, do you want to create a CMMC course for us? I'm like, great. Yeah. Why not? And, okay. and it, it ended up being a lot of work. I didn't anticipate it at the time. <laughs> it took about six months because they have a really particular format they want you to follow. And gotcha. it was, ended up being a four hour course. But the studio you saw was a studio near local here in Dallas that I went to and just rented oh, some okay. time, time there. I wish I did have right. all that equipment at home. I was like, this is office. I wish, I wish, no, but I I basically went there just to record the video portion, just to make it look really, really nice. That's outstanding. So do you know when it may go live? So it's actually live now. They published it on their platform at the end of December. So uh, as of this week, over 30, I think five people have signed up for it and gone through the course. We have about 17 five-star reviews. I'll make sure to share the link with you. Yeah, definitely. But, like, oh, you, you definitely wrote that. I, I wasn't even aware. So. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So it's just on their platform. Right now, it's their only only CMMC course on their platform. So certainly. Oh, wow. Yeah, so you really, have a captive really audience of. as well. Yeah, yeah really that's awesome. Of. Yeah, congratulations. It, thank you. It was a um, lot of work, though. I was like, wow, I was regretting it at times. Like, why did I do this? I have, I'm juggling so many other balls. There's so much else going on. Right. When, she, when I initially said yes, I was like, oh, I can knock this out in a week or two. Six months later, like, why? But now that it's done and it's out there, that's something that I'm glad I did. No, that's 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 uh, outstanding. So I, I think you're maybe, like, I, I know uh, Jacob Hill, he does training as well, but I think uh, Chelsea Pierre, I know she did some, I'm not sure if it was Udemy or, or, or what have you, but she also said it was a lot of work. But what's yeah. what's really cool about it, though, is that, like when you say when it comes to branding and things of that, that nature, like that is something that people will be able to consume for a very long time. Uh, and then like we see CMC 2.0 is out. So what happens when it's 2.1, 2.5, wow. 3.0, right? That, yeah. That's you making making those edits so <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> hopefully not six months <laughs> hopefully not yeah it'd be right. easier this time but no that, that's that's great so yeah uh definitely give me a link for that so i can put that in here as well so uh and, and we'll get to that right i'm, I'm going to need everything to put in the description so people know where to find you how to contact you all that good stuff uh so because you're so busy entrepreneurship you know uh content creation all that good stuff uh, what do you do to unwind? Like, what is your, your happy place? Like, when do you take a break? What are you doing? Um, so people know that there's a life outside of the business and outside of the cybersecurity for 
it's just a slither of time, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I must admit, it certainly is challenging as an entrepreneur to turn it off. So when you're an employee, once you clock out for the day, typically you don't really think about work. But as an entrepreneur, you're always thinking about, okay, how can I grow the business? How can I keep our existing customers happy? What new services can we offer? It, there's always something that's on your mind as an entrepreneur. But I do have a two-year-old son and a four-year-old daughter. And gotcha. my wife and I are really just hands-on with our kids. So that's that's usually my free time is spent chasing them around, playing with them. You know how it is with kids. They always want to play. <laughs> always. So, always. And they want your undivided attention. So I have to be really intentional about, especially like weekends, prioritizing them. And then like we're going to the park or doing something, leaving my phone at home, just setting up those blocks so that I can carve out that time to, to spend with them. Other than that, I haven't been doing it as much, but I like to stay active as far as working out, running. I've done a marathon, okay. a triathlon, um, like cycling, but I need to get back into it. It's been cold, so I guess it's really been my excuse lately, but right. I, I like doing that. <laughs> just kind of be just a way uh, unplug from work and just kind of in, in, in nature. I really enjoy that. No, that's, that's great. It's great that you still uh, run after the military, right? So I... I do it, but I, anything over five k, I'm like you can you can keep it. <laughs> but I've, yeah. I've never been a runner, so you know it's the having the ability to run and enjoying running. I think those are vastly different things. Um, people talk about the runners high, right? You run like five miles, ten miles, like you'll get it. Never, <laughs> I've never gotten the runners high. Just like I'm glad this is over, but you know it's yeah. I, I like being in shape and things of that nature. But yeah, I, I know a lot of people once they they leave the military service, they're like I'm not running anymore. <laughs> I took a long break off of running and I'm certainly not nowhere near as fast as I was back when I was 18, 19, right. but now I just do it to get across that finish line. I'm not competing against anyone else but myself. Just see, okay, can I do it? Right. No, that's great that you, you keep up with it. And it, you know, uh, being intentional with your time, I think that I've heard that several times because uh, you have to be intentional with your business and things of that nature. Right. But what about those people at home? Those, like, oh yeah. When you, when you, you know, you, you, you blow up, you're the Jeff Bezos, you're the Elon Musk, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> uh, what you have to look back and say, well, what did I do with my family time and things of that nature, right? Um, so just speak that to the air, right? Because like, I'm on the mm -hmm. ground floor. So when you, when you IPO, I'm going I'm to need to be there. <laughs> yeah, I got you, man. <laughs> with the GRC tool and all that good stuff. <laughs> but no, that, that, that's, that's great. So um, before I let you go, right? Because uh, we do still have a little bit more time. Um, what have I not asked you, right? You, you've been on, you, you create content, you've been mm -hmm. on other people's content. Uh, if you were the host of the show, what, what would you wish someone would have, have asked you? And it could be anything. Mm -hmm. No yeah, pressure. No pressure. I'll just slide. No pressure. When it comes to the content you create or your hobbies or some tips for uh, assessments or specifically CMC, anything mm -hmm. like where you're like, this is something people should know. Yeah. I'm more so I was piggyback off where you left off in terms of just making sure being intentional with your time as an entrepreneur. I can't remember the full name of the book, but it's an audio book I recently listened to where the guy he interviewed um, people that were over the year over the age of 80. So 80 okay. year olds. And what I found really impactful about that book is a lot of these people are very successful in their career before they retired. But of all the people we interviewed, and asked them, okay, like, what was the most important things for them? What did they regret? Things like that. None of them said they wish they worked more. Not one person said, hey, I wish I spent more time at the office or made more money or did anything. It was more about the people in their lives, the people that they invested the time in with their kids. And a lot of them did have regrets about working so much and being workaholics and not spending that time with it, with their family. And that's something that I try to keep top of mind for me because, again, it is really hard to turn it off as an entrepreneur because it right. might just always going. But I do want I do, don't want to look back and think, OK, yeah, I had a successful business, but I didn't spend that quality time with my kids and, and family. So that's something where I just always try to find that that equilibrium and, and be right. intentional about it. But it, it, it's not easy. <laughs> it's certainly fortunately with small kids. Yeah, they, they don't take no for an answer. They're aggressive. So I, right. I just I was like, <laughs> hey, I'm go with it and just being intentional about it. So that, that's one of the biggest things. Just kind of recapping on what we talked about with comparing comparison. That's something that as entrepreneurs, it's hard not to do as well because you see other businesses in your sector, your market 
or they're right. maybe doing so well and you're comparing your offerings or your content to theirs. And it's kind of human nature, but it can be counterproductive. It can be discouraging to you. So you really kind of want to focus, stay in your lane and just, Hey, you're, you're making an impact. You're doing something that's meaningful and whether it's going viral or whether it's um, getting the number of followers or likes or comments, shares, any of that, it's really doesn't matter at the end of the day, as long as you are, doing something useful with your time and you're, you're right. delivering value. So those are just things that you really have to try to keep top of mind because it's easy to lose sight of that and to get discouraged and think about, okay, I'm not working long enough. It's, it can just be a constant tug at, at your time and your energy. But ultimately, kind of going back to that book I listened to with the 80-year-olds, is just at the end of the day, what's most important? You're going to want to have your health you know, I have though your loved ones near because work's yeah. going to be there at some point you're going to retire. So it's, yeah, just kind of learn how to prioritize. No, that's great. And it, that's, that's good to put, like you said, top of mind for people who are, who are thinking about dipping their toe in the water, uh, whether it be to start their own business or if they are working for someone, uh, being a workaholic is not just a, uh, a military thing. I'm starting to see it's, it's a uh, American thing in general, right? Like, right. You, very hard working culture, sometimes to the detriment of our health, right? Everybody right. else is living longer than we are. And yet right. we're, we're out here grinding every day. So it's not to say to not uh, work hard, but it's, you know, like you said, where's the equilibrium? What are you doing for yourself? What are you doing for your family? And I, I think that's a great point of discussion that a lot of people are not uh, talking about currently, right? They're just yeah. talking about like, how do I become the next Jeff Bezos or so on and so forth, right? Right, um, yeah. That okay. self-care is so, so important. And what I started doing also is like waking up earlier in the morning. So typically I wake up at five in the morning before the kids wake up. And I just kind of have usually at least an hour to myself where I can meditate, exercise, maybe do some reading, nothing work related, okay. but really focusing on myself. And that, that meditation has helped me a lot. Just kind of reset my mind, clear my thoughts. And just kinda, yeah, just having that, that me time for that small period of, in, in the morning and start my day off right, wake me up where then it's just off to the races. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that that has helped too, or is that, that self-care. Okay. So before, before I land this plane, right, before I wrap it up, when it comes to meditation, a lot of people are not good at it. I'm not so either. So <laughs> it, it takes time to develop those skills. Right. Where did you start? Five minutes? Ten minutes? Like what, <laughs> how did you begin to, to start that process? I start at 10 minutes and I'm still at 10 minutes. That's really my sweet <laughs> spot. And yeah, for anyone who's tried meditation, it's not easy. Those thoughts are going to keep creeping right. in. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, the more you do it, the more you get better at it. But I don't know if you ever get to the point where you just completely can zone out and not have any intrusive thoughts. But I know when I, I, I like guided meditation. So that's one thing to kind of repeat in the guided meditation. Uh, okay, like it. the thoughts are going to come in. You just mm -hmm. let them blow away like leaves or something like just, yeah, don't. Don't get distracted by it. So, but okay. yeah, I'm a yeah, big fan of meditation. You're, you're a veteran. Yeah. You said, well, blow away like leaves. Like, you, <laughs> <laughs> you got the metaphor yeah. down and all. But yeah. no, thank you so much for your time. Again, uh, I, I, I appreciate you reaching out um, and, and being part of the podcast. Uh, I definitely want to have you back on the show, uh, especially with how you're, how you're growing and those initiatives you have in the future. I definitely want to, to you know, discuss those things as they come up and new things as, as they start to, uh, to sprout as well. When it comes to being impactful, like uh, I, I know a lot of people are going to get a lot out of this. Uh, just like I tell everybody on the, on the show, like our demographic needs to see more of us, needs to see more people of color in this space uh, to help it grow. Not just uh, based upon uh, specific characteristics, but just diversity in general, right? Diversity of thought, diversity of culture, diversity of all things, because uh, this, this space needs that in order to grow and to be healthy. Um, right. And I think we're we're making strides, right? But we still make up less than 10%. I, I want to see that grow over time. Um, so please keep creating content. Please keep, continue to share your, your journey because it is inspiring to those who are listening uh, and, and, and to myself as well, right? I, like I said, I'm already picking up things. I already picked up new tools that I'm able to, uh, to apply. So hopefully other people are also making those strides. And, you know, uh, don't be afraid to, like you said, you're going to suck at the beginning, create <laughs> yeah. the content and embrace then it. Build, <laughs> embrace the suck, build your content yeah. up. Uh, but yeah, for all those who are looking to, uh, to find you, definitely hit up your, your website, everything will be in the description. 
Um, you can continue to, to listen to our podcast. Again, Monday, Tuesday, our topics, Wednesday, discussion. Uh, Thursdays, Ask Us SP or a throwback if I don't have a guest, but I have several guests lined up. Again, very blessed and very thankful for that. Uh, Fridays, everything else, movies, books, games, like things are not cyber related because I, I like to show people that we, we do things outside of work as well. Right. Uh, yeah. And, you know, it just helps us to unwind as well, like to, to get it off our chest. And then when it comes to these shows, I hope to do more of these. Again, I'm going to stick to Thursdays for now, but I'm thinking of a new format, right? Thing of, of, of what we could do because these are very popular. Like you and all the previous guests are very impactful to the community. Um, and I just want to keep it going, right? I, I just, I, I love to see it, as they say. Um, hit up all the websites that go by our name. You can be a person. I'm at RyRy Security Guy. That's R-Y, R-Y Security Guy. You can find me on LinkedIn, Clubhouse, Twitter, and Threads. And where can they find you? Uh, so YouTube, um, our website, Aspire Cyber, Derek Phillips on LinkedIn. Those are the primary ones that I'm active on. There it is. Continue to tune in. Stay safe. Stay secure.